Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy and I own the Water Filter eStore and the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Today we're talking about how to install a Viqua IHS 12D4 mini rack system like this one here. Three stage ultraviolet system, all in one, super easy to install, line in, line out, um, very straightforward. Now the installation procedure is exactly the same for the IHS 22D4 and the IHS 22E4. So exactly the same. So three quarter inch in, three quarter inch out, there's a um, female line in, male line out. And uh, so what you can see I've already done here is um, I've already uh, simulated the, uh, the line in. So again, I would put a ball valve before the unit going in and a ball valve um, after the unit going out. And that way in the future, it'll make uh, changing the filters and changing the UV lamp and the cleaning the sleeve, etc., much easier. Now think about install location. So water flows from the left to the right. Um, so think about that in your planning. You need to allow 20 inches of space above the unit for changing the UV lamp. So think about that in terms of uh, if it's going in a crawl space or uh, how close you're mounting it to the ceiling. Also you need an electrical outlet nearby or, an ex or a heavy duty extension cord to power the unit. Now you want to make sure you don't install it right above an electrical outlet because again, when you're changing the filters in the future, water could splash and could splash into that, causing problems. So think about all those things. Now the unit would be mounted on the wall. So typically you would install a two by four on the wall. Try to, well, you need to catch um, two studs because once this unit is installed and filled full of water, it actually is quite heavy. Once you've taken all those things into account, the, the last thing I'd like to consider about the installation location and uh, what to add is a surge suppressor. So the electrical plugs into a surge suppressor. I highly recommend that. Um, that will make it uh, last much longer and give you a lot of peace of mind, super cheap insurance. The unit comes fully assembled the way you see it here. The only thing that I've done is I've slid the controller onto the bracket at the front. So once you've done that, then um, it already has the filters installed, but you do need to install the quartz sleeve and the UV lamp. So let's go ahead with that. So as you can see, I'm wearing gloves. And the reason I'm wearing those gloves is you can't handle the, the, the quartz sleeve or the UV lamp with your bare hands. So either use a cloth or gloves like I have. So there's an O-ring. You're gonna slide the O-ring about an inch from the end onto the quartz sleeve. And then you're gonna run the quartz sleeve inside here. Now the quartz sleeve is fairly fragile, so be careful how you handle it. But, and also make sure as you're running it into the, the stainless steel housing that you're running it straight. You'll see that there's a spring at the bottom. So once you've got it located, it fits in there. So then there's this gray nut that holds it into place. So you can just slide that on top and tighten that nut. And you just need to tighten that hand tight. That's it. Okay, once you've got that in there, then you can grab the um, UV lamp itself and run that inside there. So what you'll notice when you start to tighten up the UV lamp that it only goes so far and stops. It doesn't uh, get tighter and tighter and then stop, it, it just stops. So when it stops, it's in all the way and uh, you're done there. So now what you need to do, is so come around the other side here, make the connection to the lamp with the controller. So as you'll see at the top here, there's two wires. There's a green ground wire and a red strain relief. So those two get connected to the same screw that's at the top here. So what we'll do is we'll undo that with Phillips screwdriver. Set that aside. And they both go onto the same screw. Let's feed those through. Back into the same spot. Then we'll tighten it up. Now just be careful that um, the electrical connection is away from the UV lamp, the, the two fittings on the end of the strain relief and the ground wire. And the reason you, you need to do that is because there's a movable ring there. There's a movable ring at the top here, and uh, if you don't make, want to make sure that those connections or those wires don't foul that ring. Okay, so once you finish that, then um, it, there's two connections here, one to this jumper and two to the lamp here. So you line those up with the uh, connector. Once you've got it lined up, you push it down and then both of these wings snap into place on each side. So once you've got them snapped into place, then what you can do is you can plug in the controller. Plug that in. 
And you'll see once you plug it in, it starts beeping and it goes through a startup procedure. So the first thing you'll see is uh, the LED readout here will go to 365 when you initially install this. And basically what, that, what that's telling you is that you've got 365 days before you need to change this lamp. Tomorrow it'll show 364, the next day 363. So it counts down the days to when it's time to service the, the UV lamp. You'll also see some LEDs on the front here. So there's a, on this pictogram, it shows the square box. That represents the controller. So this green LED being lit solid as it is now tells you that the controller is working perfectly. Now this green LED that's flashing, that represents the UV lamp. And the reason it's flashing is because it's not up to full intensity yet. It takes about a minute, minute and a half to go through that. So we need to, before we proceed, we need to wait till it gets to full intensity before we run any water through this. So that you'll also see an LED on the far left side here um, with a pictogram, uh, uh, this little box on the side here, and that rep represents a sensor. Now this unit doesn't come with a sensor, so that will never be lit up. All right, so as we're waiting for that uh, lamp to go off here on the end, um, we need to keep in mind that once this, this lamp is off, then we can start to run water through here. And um, so we're gonna open it from the inlet side we're only going to open it part way till it fills up the whole system and then we're going to check for leaks. Make sure there's no leaks. Once there's no leaks, then we can open up the outlet side. Once we've opened up the outlet side, we're going to go to a faucet that has large flow and doesn't have a screen in it. Um, so we're going to want to go to like a laundry sink or a bathtub, somewhere like that. And what we're going to do there is we're going to flush the debris out of the um, any debris that might have been entered while we did the installation, but we also, there'll be some carbon fines coming from the carbon filter. So we wanna flush out those fines too at the same time. So the last stage of the installation is disinfection. So I have a separate video that deals with that and uh, definitely check that out and make sure you disinfect the system and the household plumbing that's downstream of the ultraviolet light before you proceed. And that's it. If you like what you saw today, please click the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified of all the new videos that become available on our channel. For more information, you can go to our websites, either thewaterstoremidland.com or thewaterfiltereastore.com. And again, I'm Gary the Water Guy from the Water Store Midland, Ontario. Thanks for watching.